opportunity for some new ideas for you to share with your birds. And um, the goal always for us is to inspire you to make a better life for them. So, um, you know, in captivity, it's just a fact of life that a lot of our birds have to live in a cage. And um, a lot of times that's, you know, not a very active or interesting place for them to be. So the goal today is to figure out how to make that more fun, more enriching, more empowering, more spacious, et cetera. So anytime I start a class, uh, find the right buttons here, um, I like to ask myself the very question about the content that I'm trying to explain or describe or explore. So I'd like to ask you guys this question. What, what does a cage mean to you? What is a cage? Going to rely on Michelle to uh, give us feedback of things that you guys are saying in the chat. But I want you to kind of think on your own for a minute. So some of the, the things people are saying is a home, their habitat, a safe place, um, enclosed, a bedroom, a safe place, a safe place, lots of sleeping safe place, the bird's bedroom, um, their home. I love it. Fantastic. Because, you know, we kind of get into our routines in life or in taking care of our birds, and we don't always stop to think, you know, why do we do that? Or what does that mean? Or how does that feel to a bird? Or what's the purpose? Or can we make it better? That's always my question. Can I make it better? So in asking myself this question, these are the, the things I came up with. And uh, as you can see, safety was at the top of my list as well. Um, but you know, it's not all positive. There are some downsides to a cage as well. If you think about a bird in the wild, a bird in the wild is completely empowered to make choices and go wherever they want to go, whenever they think they need to go somewhere. And in our homes and in their cages, often with locked doors, it one may not be very big, but two, there's no escape or opportunity to make a decision to leave it. So we need to give them as many opportunities both inside as well as outside the cage, right? So, um, and then like many of you said, it's a home. So I like to think about the cage in terms of what does a bird do in the cage and how can I set that up to be kind of like the way we think about our own houses? Because if you look at how your bird moves in the cage, assuming you've given them lots of things to do and to move on, you will notice that they may poop often in the same place or like to play with toys in the same place or definitely like to sleep often in the same place, which is high, the highest point. So if you think about when you're setting up your cage, how to make it like a home, that's a really great um, way to go about it. So we're gonna go through some of the basics. I know sometimes there's a, a lot of basics involved, but we're gonna use those basics, build on them and then put them all together. So let's start with um, just, you know, here's a cage. Look at that. I mean, does it have enough perches? I don't think so. Does it have enough to do? Definitely not. Is it big enough for an African gray? Whoa, absolutely not in my opinion. So, but this is the way a lot of cages are marketed, sold, and used. And I think we need to do uh, a much better service to our birds in terms of their quality of life. So, you know, we have a lot of birds that come and go out of the adoption center or through our program. And I think um, at least the way I've always approached a cage at this point after taking them down and putting them together a zillion times is that I start with the purchase. Um, it just saves time later of taking other things down and repositioning them. But most importantly, in my opinion, the perches are like a highway system. They're the way the bird gets around the cage. It gives them a way to maneuver and have activity and opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. So um, I don't know if many of you have the, uh, the good uh, opportunity to have a stainless cage. They're more expensive, but they last a long time but most people don't. And you know, powder coating these days is not so wonderful. So another reason to give your birds 
lots of ways to get around the cage is they're not having to climb on the bars and put wear and tear on the powder coating, okay? So, but most importantly is to think about your bird is moving this way. They're, they're moving horizontally, they're not moving vertically. So that perfectly vertical, not very wide cage that fits in the corner of your living room may be very nice for you, but it's not the right fit for a bird and what a bird needs to have exercise and quality of life. So um, one of the reasons of having a lot of perches is that it gives birds activity on their feet. So many birds have problems with their feet. They get uh, atrophied for being in the same place on the same size perch. They get bumblefoot and other things from being rubbed on surfaces that are hard on their feet. Um, so it's, we like to think of it as like Goldilocks, you know? get one that's too small, that you think is too small, one that you think is too big, and one that's just right. And um, then there's lots of textures and shapes and, and a bunch of other options in there as well. So again, I don't think you can have too many perches inside the cage. If your bird is never getting out of the cage, um, then you know you have to give them space to flap their wings and stuff like that. But I hope that all of you who are here today are absolutely finding ways to let your bird out of the cage and uh, opportunities to go do other things as often as possible. So here we go. This is about feet. Um, again, we've seen birds in the wild where the macaws are sleeping at the very top of the tree where the branches are the thinnest and the smallest birds are sleeping lower at the bottom where the branches are the widest and there's absolutely no issue there. So if anybody tells you that, that the perch has to be exactly fitting in a certain way, you say bah humbug, that's not true. My bird needs lots of opportunities to exercise its feet. So in case you're wondering what kind of perches are there, um, of course rope. We highly recommend rope. Uh, for purposes of sleeping, it's softer, etc. There's a lot of great woods out there. There's a lot of great natural woods. We're going to talk about some of those as well. Um, and we try to avoid some of the more concrete ones, which we're going to talk about in a minute as well. Now, if you're like me and your figures don't work so well anymore, I love these uh, perches that have the plastic tips. Um, it's just easier for me than a wing nut. And uh, while a lot of birds like to chew the rope and destroy the perch, I'm sure you've had that experience, I just want you to see that um, you can still use parts. This cockatoo loves doing and undoing the tips of this uh, now demolished perch. So don't throw it away, it makes a great action toy. Some of you have access to great wood, uh, maybe in your backyard or in your neighborhood or country house, etc. And so a lot of those woods, which we're also going to talk about, um, make great perches and you can make some of those yourself. So um, just remember that birds in the wild all love to eat bark. Uh, it's a very natural thing for every species of ferret. So having uh, different kinds of wood is a great opportunity for them to explore. Um, we are definitely leery of some of those grooming perches. Birds come to us with those all the time. Uh, don't let anybody in a pet store sell you those crazy sandpaper covered things. Those are really hard on the feet. They will make the bottom of a bird's feet red and rough. Um, they do make some perches like the one you see in the middle here that is smooth across the top so that the bird is not getting, um, you know, totally, uh, like sandpaper on its feet. Uh, rocks are terrific. Uh, if you can find safe rocks. Um, I'm not sure if bird on the rocks is still available for selling rock perches or not, but that's where these rock perches come from. And that's great for nails. You know, it helps keep the nails um, done a little bit. We are huge fans of shelves. Shelves come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I am not aware of any bird that hasn't um, taken immediately to spending time on a shelf. Putting your feet, their feet flat is very comfortable for some of them. They, uh, many of them even like to sleep on the shelf. Um, 
At the bottom here, you see these natural inspiration brackets, which allow you to put two by fours in them, clean ones, not any uh, treated wood, please. Um, which is also great for outdoor aviaries because it comes in stainless as well as powder coated. And um, sometimes birds who have handicaps, that's really a benefit to them to be able to be on a flat shell. Stainless, of course, is one of those permanent lifetime wonderful things. But these that we have in our helpingparrots.com store, these sun decks are very inexpensive, I think $10 or so, and they just clip onto the side or take them off, clip them on someplace else. They're, um, as you can see, little pipsqueak over here likes to sleep on his little sun deck. So um, again, any kind of shelf is great. We never, we always put a shelf in every cage. So um, not only is it a great place for movement, but you can put the shelves on the outside of the cage too. Those sun decks I was telling you about, you can easily take it off put it on the outside of the cage, cable tie something to it. Uh, there's no reason why you can't decorate the outside of the cage as much as the inside of the cage. It's a great way to give your bird more activities. So here you go. Here's a, a shelf that's been cable tied so that it won't fall down. This is one of those drop down doors. Some of the cage companies have those nice drop down doors, but they're, they always serve as shelves when the cages, when the doors open, of course. Uh, we also use shelves to like um, hold toys. In this case, it's a six pack toy that the shelf is able to hold and then we can connect it with these baby links. So the bird is able to stand on the shelf and play with the foraging toy. These are um, used for washing baby bottles and nipples. Um, you can get them in the baby section at any of the stores. And then inside is this, I don't know if my cursor is showing you uh, properly, but inside is a, sh a short uh, pot. And then I just plant like radish seeds and the seeds grow up through it. So the bird can't destroy the whole plant. It, can just, it will just eat the actual sprout so that the plant can continue to grow. But again, a shelf is a great conduit for placing that toy. It makes it a lot of fun. And this is just to show you, you know, little birds like big, big uh, perches too. They, you can put every size in the cage and watch how your bird moves. And my guess is that they're gonna move to every kind of shape and size that you offer, which is great. Great for mental enrichment, great for physical enrichment. And here's just a few more ideas. Um, this macaw up in the top corner um, had a very serious lifetime injury. And so we, we got a piece of wood that extended far beyond the bar, so there was no chance of it falling, although you could drill a hole and cable tie it. But since um, he had a hard time walking, this uh, allowed him to scoot across the wood, which was great. Um, here on the bottom right corner, you can put something, again, fun, or just as a mat to keep things from falling through. And in the bottom left corner, Winnie, she had some kind of, um, I can't remember what was going on with her feet, but something that was very uncomfortable for her. So that was a wood perch that just had some fleece, which is the only uh, material we recommend for safety purposes that was attached to that piece of wood and it gave her a nice comfortable place to rest. All right, so let's talk about action perches, not just plain old perches, but things that allow a bird to actually move. So, you know, things you think might be just a toy actually can make great activity perches as well. I love these big uh, swings because they provide an opportunity to replenish the toys down the side while still leaving the perch. And sometimes you think this just looks like a toy, but you know, these hanging things also make for great activity uh, perches as well. Some of you probably um, have birds that maybe don't want to come out of the cage or they're more cautious or nervous. 
So just putting a perch on the door gives the bird the opportunity to make a choice as to whether or not they want to come out while still retaining their opportunity to go back in if they feel uncomfortable. So it's a nice transition perch to have. I almost always like to put a perch on the door for that reason. And for those of you who might have Quakers, um, you know that they are especially protective of their cages. It's a natural behavior. And uh, so many times we have Quakers that come to us where people say they are, you know, label them aggressive or mean when they try to take them out of the cage. And that's not what they are at all. They're just following their natural behavior, which is don't come inside my house. And I think we need to respect that. That's not asking too much of us to respect their need to protect their space. So it's not a win-lose um, exchange at that point. It just means we have to wait till they're out of the cage before we service it or touch it. And that's okay. That's a respectful way to go about doing that. So in case you thought your Amazon needed a perch that was exactly this shape and size, you can see uh, but that's not the case. Not only does this bird like that thin, thin perch, but he likes to hang upside down and eat at the same time. Go figure, huh? And um, in case you didn't notice, birds in the wild get very dirty. I don't know if any of you have Timna grays, but I always find that the Timna grays especially like to hang upside down part of their natural behavior. So we want to see some action. Um, and we're going to get into more of the action uh, perches later too. All right, so after we've got this highway system set up, then uh, the next thing I like to think about is where they're going to eat. And sometimes that means putting bowls near some of the perches. I like to give, um, I like to have opportunities to put bowls in many different places. They don't always have to go in the same place. And a lot of times, like putting the water on the opposite side means they have to walk across the perch in order to get to the water, which is good for action. If you have some of those perch potato type birds, you need them moving as much as possible. So the more bowls they have, the more things they want to get into in those bowls uh, is great. And as you see uh, from this bird, poor Brandy's water was right underneath the perch, which is pretty darn disgusting. Doesn't make sense, does it? Um, we have this discussion a lot of times with different people. I know a lot of veterinarians are very pro water bottle. I personally am not pro water bottle, um, but you know, each, each home needs to do what works for them. Uh, my only caution about both is that you need to keep them clean. Having a water bottle doesn't mean that you don't have to change the water or clean the bottle. You have to clean it just as often and more so sometimes because you can't see the dirt the same way you can in a bowl. Um, so think about it. I know some birds that have died from water bottles because the little um, pellet thing at the end, the little ball that didn't work properly. So make sure you check that, okay? The other thing I like about water bowls is that um, it's very natural for a bird to take uh, some kind of food and dunk it in the water, get it wet or re-moisten a piece of fruit or especially a pellet to get a dry pellet softer. So having the opportunity to dunk their food into a water bowl is very satisfying for them. And of course, some birds like to take their baths in bowls. So if they don't have that water feature, they may not be getting as many baths as they would prefer and need to have. So that's important to know your bird. This is our friend Pip Squeak again. She's a great role model for all the new birds that come and go, showing them how to take baths in their water bowls. And then food. So we have to think of the food bowls as well, or other options. In this case, you see skewers. I love skewers. They give us opportunities to uh, hang in different places so we can make an activity. You can take the same 
activity and hang it in a different place the next day and then you have a whole new toy or activity because it's just simply in a different place. So that's great. So every time you go to throw something away that you think, hmm, maybe I don't need that cereal box anymore, maybe that might make a good foraging toy on a skewer. So think about how you can create your own opportunities for foraging and fun. And then lastly, where is a bird going to sleep? Almost always a bird is going to go to the highest point in the cage. And so oftentimes people will put that concrete perch at the top so that the nails will get you know worn down and i that is just um doing a big disservice to your bird it's uncomfortable it's hard on the feet um in most cases birds prefer a cotton perch at the highest point so um you know watch your bird spend time just looking at what your bird does and think about what makes them comfortable what they prefer if you give them lots of different options in the cage then you'll pretty soon learn what it is they prefer. Because, you know, we all have our own preferences for all of these kinds of things. Um, and of course, some birds like to go into a small hut, but just be careful. As you can see, this bird is starting to chew this fabric, which can be very dangerous. We've had, I think, two birds now die from fabric digestion soon after they came to us because the Relinquishers didn't know that they were swallowing the fabric and it was causing their digestive system to be impacted. So when your bird is regurgitating, it either means they're getting too sexy or, you know, beware that make sure that there's not some impaction going on as well. But some birds really enjoy being in a more enclosed space when they go to sleep and that's understandable and, and appropriate as long as it's safe. And then this is one of my, one of the most important takeaways I want you to have from today is that a lot of times our birds are, they're already cautious by nature because they're prey animals, but sometimes they feel trapped because they're in a cage that they can't get out of or escape from. And that is stressful for them and their nature uh, as prey animals. So. I think it's, re and maybe in some cases, it's why they uh, have feather destructive behavior problems. So giving birds opportunities to choose, empowerment is often the message in many of our classes, but it, this one as well. Give your bird a place that they can choose to get away from prying eyes, that they can have a little personal time and space of privacy. And that often will take away take off the edge of some stress for some birds. And especially if you have a busy household and they need to just have some downtime, or maybe you have kids that are moving really fast and making them nervous, or maybe they're in front of a window and they're feeling a little threatened by something they see out the window, all kinds of reasons. And we don't always know what those reasons are, right? Because we don't live in their heads. They live in their heads. They can't tell us exactly what it is that's bothering them. But if they have the opportunity to make a choice to where they can feel more comfortable, then that is a more than appropriate thing for us to provide for them. So, and you know, a lot of birds live in solitary environments. Maybe it's the only bird in the house or the only animal in the house and the people go away when we used to go out to work, like some of us. And, um, you know, the bird's left alone, and that's also very stressful. So feeling like they can be safe because they're used to being in some kind of flock dynamic, that this will also give them the opportunity to have some privacy. So as you see here, there's this little tiny cockatiel back here who's hiding behind a toy. I think uh, big toys, Let's go back for a minute. Sorry about that. I don't know how to make it stop. <laughs> anyway, uh, oftentimes providing this sense of privacy is easy enough to do with a, a toy that's larger than the bird. 
And again, skewers are so helpful this way because you can hang things on the skewers of all shapes and sizes. You can replenish it once the skewer, um, the bird has taken and played with everything on it. So it's a really easy way. This next one is an African gray who um, definitely wanted his privacy. Whoops, I guess not. First, it's a cricket. So that was Webster. We found that we could take Webster anywhere by giving him a bag. It became like his uh, transportation system, but he, he often wanted to just go inside his bag to take a nap. He wasn't trying to make a nest. He just wanted to get away from it all. So here's some other examples of, you know, oversized toys or places to hide um, that might work for your species of bird. But then we have to be careful and we distinguish between what is privacy and what is nesting because we're not trying to encourage nesting behavior. Um, that will happen often enough of its own, probably. Um, so we don't need to exacerbate nesting behavior, which can lead to all kinds of problems, behavior and medical. So here's just some examples of what I would consider nesting versus privacy. I took this picture the other day of uh, Bertie, who's uh, at, in our adoption center at the landing, and I just kind of wondered what you thought. Do you think this, that Bertie is trying to find some time out for herself, or is she trying to be nesty? What do you guys think? We've got time out, time out, playing, could be either, nesting, nesting, playing. It's hard to know, isn't it? You know, especially if you didn't know this bird already. Uh, the one reason I thought it was playing more than nesting was because if you see the one over here on the right, she likes to make a hole in the paper and put her head through and, and almost like play peekaboo. But you know, it could lead to nesting. So again, pay attention to your bird's behavior and try to adjust accordingly to make it the most um, healthy setup possible. Um, a lot of times we forget the bottom of the cage and you know, a lot of birds don't go to the bottom of the cage. We're gonna talk about grates and all that here shortly. But some birds are ground feeders in the wild and it's very natural for them to go to the bottom. Um, I think cockatoos are a really great example of that. So providing them with opportunities to play safely in an unnesting kind of format um, can be a very useful thing. As you see, these, both of these cockatoos are having a grand old time in their bucket of stuff. And it's also a great place to throw in those toy parts and other things that get used that you can't, you know, restring again. So here's the, a Kleenex box. You're about to throw out the Kleenex box. Why not just make it a quick foraging toy, right? This is Michelle's wonderful bird, Pargo. And I love, do you want to describe, Michelle, what you've done for Pargo here? I think that would be great if you did that, since this is your wonderful idea. Sure. So one thing that I, I noticed that Pargo liked to do is he likes to chip on toys. Um, he is a Pacephalus parrot and it seems like they, they will, you know, work on toys at the bottom of their cage too. Um, but he'll chip on wood and he'll kick back with his foot too. I've also seen grays do some scratching behavior. And so I set up a, essentially a litter box um, that he could kind of root around in and chip wooden toys. And, but I wanted it to be so that I could put food in there too. So it would also be 
um, a foraging box, but I didn't want it to be too enclosed so that it would be very nesty. So I found these plastic cubes that had no metal. Um, and at the time I could just get them at Target. And um, so I would put a very small litter box inside of that, inside the cage. And it's kind of funny because it, it ends up being a fixture in his cage now. He uses the top part as a shelf and will sometimes take a toy down there to you know, chew on, but he'll also go down into the box. And I've even seen him make it into a foraging toy where he will take some food or another, a Dixie cup that I've used as a foraging toy down there to, um, to he refills his own foraging toys. And the beauty of this is that if he's up higher in the cage, he's not pooping into his toy box, which is a really nice feature. I think that was a great idea. We need to figure out who's selling plastic cubes again, because it seems like a really great addition to so many uh, birds that like to play at the bottom of their cage. So a lot of times um, we question what kind of cage we have space for. And I want to stress that these are our minimum recommended widths. Again, remember that birds move sideways, not up and down. That is their preferred mode of action. And that's the only way you can add more things to do is if you're going horizontal. So, you know, every now and then people will say they have a cage they want to donate to us because it was just too big for their birds. And I just, I always try to talk them out of that. There's a way to retrofit the cage into different spaces so that it can still be as wide and spacious as possible. So the, these are my two little rosellas. They're in a double, this cage is uh, 64 inches wide. You can see there's one here and one here. And uh, they're very old and one of them has terrible feet. So having that highway system of things to go back and forth all the time is really important. And probably the reason she's still alive and doing well is because she does have to move. She has to move to get to different food bowls and things. So action is really important for her well-being at this point. So this is looking at it from a different angle. There's one Rosella there and another Rosella there. And this is from the other end, peekaboo. So let's put it all together, all the things we've talked about and get into more depth, but um, width is important. As many perches as possible is important. Uh, a shelf, multiple opportunities for food, at least three bowls, if not more, because you have fresh food, water, pellets. Hopefully you're not feeding seed, whole other discussion. Uh, and then things on the outside of the cage. Places to go and things to do. Okay, so this is based on like a 32 inch cage. If somebody just wanted some basic information about how to put a cage together, this is what uh, I would recommend. You had two cotton perches crisscrossing, um, which gave you an opportunity to put two action toys different kinds of wood perches in front of other bowls, including one on the door, and then a shelf at the very back for a bird to get away and a toy to hide behind. So if you're just, if you're like, I don't know how to do this stuff, I really don't know what to do, here's just a very simple idea to get you started. If for some reason you have a bird who is very nervous, then putting some food bowls on the door it's very helpful, especially if you don't have, uh, if the, this type of cage did not have uh, doors that got to the other food bowls. Just doing it on the door or when, um, until your bird is more comfortable in its new setting or whatever, being able to access uh, taking care of the cage without putting your hands inside the cage can be a great way to build trust with a nervous bird. All right, so let's talk about that other valuable real estate, the whole outside of the cage. We haven't even gotten to 
away from the cage yet, but the outside of the cage still provides you lots of opportunities. This is, some of you are familiar with Jake, who's in the Adoption Center right now, and he just loves Roses of Sharon. That's what that plant is. It's very, um, um, it's a very safe plant for birds. And so we just, you know, cut down a big stalk and he works on it. He peels off the bark, he eats the flowers, he chews on the bugs, throws down the leaves. I mean, what a great activity for a bird. Or then just putting something on top of the cage, either for the bird to access from above or below. Look at this African gray. We simply put a piece of cardboard on top and this bird spent hours hours trying to um, play with that piece of cardboard. I think that's a movie that I have right here. This is safe cardboard, um, you know, be careful if you do use cardboard where it's come from, where it's been, if it's dirty, etc. This is from inside packaging of something and had not been the outside of a box from mailing or other things. But what great fun and how simple, right? This is uh, one of the macaw cages at the landing. And every now and then there's a walnut that just has to get thrown on top of the cage. And then this is Ollie. Ollie's like, how do I get that walnut? And he works a long time trying to figure it out. So what a simple way to just provide a little short-term foraging activity. It gets them moving, provides a mental challenge. You know, things don't have to be super complicated to be fun. And if they're too complicated, you're not gonna do it. So, you know, don't try to tackle things that you know you can't follow through on. Start simple and um, build upon them. So, you know, going to other places is also very important for your bird, um, not only for the physical activity, but I think more importantly for the mental activity, just not being stuck in the same place all the time. Can you imagine just being in the same room all the time, especially a small room? So it would just wear you down. You would just eventually kind of lose your oomph, right? So having activities outside the cage is really, really important for your bird's mental well-being. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, this is just getting over to a hanging something. Unfortunately, they don't make these atoms anymore, but hey, just having a place to go other than the cage itself is very useful. This, this one here, we have instructions we can send you. This is for the hardware store, simple electric conduit and PVC, um, you know, there's a name for that, <laughs> joints or whatever. I think that's about $10 worth of parts there. What a great way to provide another opportunity. Um, at the uh, Adoption Center, we hang grid wall on the ceiling. Um, I think it's, it's one of my favorite ideas ever. It allows you to move things around, especially if you have multiple cages or you're moving cages around and you, or you, you want a different plaything ha hanging that day. It's simple enough to change things out. Um, if anybody ever does this and wants some advice, just email us and we'll be glad to tell you a couple of things about how to make sure and hang it safely. But what a great idea for providing hanging activities. And a lot of birds need hanging activities so they don't get down on the floor and cause trouble. And because they like to be high, that's a natural uh, behavior for a bird to want to be high. So let's give it to them. So here is Ollie and Layla. And Layla figured out how to get up there. And I'll let you see the rest. She's like, oh no, what do I do now?
and the the uh, hanging orbit there was just slightly far away so that Ollie had to really figure out how to get there. That also is a great way to, you know, get their minds working so they have to figure out how to solve a problem. In the wild, they're 24 seven figuring out how to solve problems, how to avoid predators, how to find food, how, how to find a safe place to sleep. In captivity, we give them this nice safe space and we give them a big bowl of food. They don't have to figure anything out. Well, you know, that's pretty oppressive in the end. So giving them challenges is a great way to enrich their lives. This is a uh, hyacinth that was at the landing for a short while. Um, and I'll explain after the meeting. So um, as you can see, this is another great use of the grid wall on the ceiling, but uh, um, we try to avoid chain. So uh, using a safe ceiling extender or just a piece of PVC over the chain is, a, is a, something to consider. Okay, now watch what she does here. She's like, okay, I've had my fun on the swing. I'm ready to go back to my cage. Job, Another challenge. Just we just moved her cage ever so slightly, so she had to work harder to figure it out. Of course, this is maybe a little to the extreme, but as you can see, it's possible to make a wonderland of activity at a high level because again, birds love to be high, and so as long as you can protect the things on the floor beneath them because they will be making a mess. Um, that's great. That's just, it's great for them. Okay, so let's talk about plants a little bit because plants are so enriching for, for a bird. This is a sunflower. Um, but we, if you go to parrotenrichment.com, there are a lot of activities. This is um, a, a container with organic dirt and Jasmine loves radish seeds and other things, so we can never keep it planted enough. And he will go and dig out those sprouts and eat the sprouts and have a great time. And then over here you see this Amazon, this, this um, play stand is right next to the cage, so this bird has the opportunity to go back and forth as they see fit. So they have nasturtiums and kale and collard and a whole bunch of great safe plants for this bird to eat. So that's you know, they get to choose when they eat their greens. So here's just a couple of safe and not safe plants. Um, this site is the one I most recommend, uh, MD Vaden. He's got the best uh, bird related things. I think that um, there's always gonna be some differentiation between the sites about what may or may not be safe, but there are some clear things that are safe and clear things that are not safe. So if you find something that's got a little bit of controversy about it, just do your homework. So um, speaking of plants, so you can, here is a Christmas tree stand up in the top left corner. And that's a great way to make a foraging tree. Or on the right side, just, um, I think this is a butterfly bush. And um, with enough rocks in a pot, it becomes a great foraging tree, a nice safe one. Or you can hang something that is, you know, adjacent to uh, an activity, a cage or a boring from the ceiling, etc. 
just so you know, the little birds like their greens too. I just love the way the cockatiels demolish their kale. Um, after our big retreat in May, which some of you attended, I was inspired by one of the speakers to make a, she was talking about how the macaws after the Disney show would all go into a big foraging table and, and play with browse and other things. So I took an old table and I made um, this and put it on top and just, I figure I can replace the wood as soon as it's eaten, no problem. Um, and inside on the bottom was stick on tiles. So it made it easy to clean if something got sticky or messy. And sometimes she takes a bath, but generally it's just full of stuff to do. Um, for a couple of my other macaws, I tried giving them a cart. Unfortunately, this cart, they are able to get down on the ground and make trouble. So we're going to have to rethink that. But I love these other carts that you can get from Amazon or other places. I saw this one yesterday at Whole Foods. I loved it because it was thin and the legs were such that most birds probably can't get down them. But I tell you, the best thing I ever did when I had a cockatoo was to have a cart full of activities like this because cockatoos more than any other species are very clingy and needy and demanding. And so when you give them this kind of activity cart where they can just play with a bunch of stuff and hang out with you, then they're not demanding your full time attention. So uh, the other thing about a cart is that it also, you know, it has these handles that become basically purchased. So it, it really makes for a great toy and you can just wheel it out of the way. And in case you thought that that was only for big birds, here's our friend Pipsqueak again, and all the leftover toy parts from that day. And what a great time little Pip is having. Um, I want to give a shout out to Macaw Love. This is one of their products that I recently invested in. Um, this would be Phoenix and Phoenix's friend Nutty. And this is how they have their breakfast now. It's safe because it's hanging from the ceiling. Um, I just want to say these are like stainless, uh, these are steel cable ties, very thin and I covered them with a piece of PVC so that I could drill a hole in the middle and add toys. Uh, but if you were using chain, you would definitely want to put some PVC over it because as Judith Archer from the Parrot Posse has taught us well, chain can be very dangerous. So um, a lot of birds get caught, their nails get caught in chain. So this is a much safer way to hang something and very inexpensive. So McCall Love has some great products. Uh, they're only on Facebook, but, uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's not uh, inexpensive, but it's definitely a great investment. All right, let's talk about cleaning the cage. Oh my gosh, so many times birds come to us and you'd think that people would never clean the cage. Um, if, you know, just take two minutes, five minutes every day and do just a little wipe down of the cage. It will make a huge difference in your bird's life, your life. It will keep things more sanitary. Um, these are my two favorite cleaning products. Chlorhexidine is, uh, it has no smell. I can't stand those things like poop off, frankly, that have smell. So chlorhexidine has no smell. It's very antibacterial. It's antiviral and antifungal in some, to some extent. It's very inexpensive. Um, we go through maybe a bottle a week at the landing, but we're cleaning a lot of cages. You, if you only have one or two birds, that probably lasts you months. So you just have a little bucket, put some hot, a splash of chlorhexidine, some hot water, and, you know, just make sure that you're giving the cage a little bit of cleaning every day. Um, Bio Green Clean is another one of my favorites. Uh, it, it is, uh, more expensive, but you, um, dilute it so it doesn't, it, it works really well to get off some of those 
hard to get off spots like poop and things like that, especially on play stands. If you have a flat surface, that's where I use it mostly. It's very safe. They're both very safe. Uh, chlorhexidine, there's a medical version of chlorhexidine, which is far more expensive, which is used in water and stuff. You do not want to use chlorhexidine oops, in your bird's water because it is scented, but you don't smell it. I shouldn't say it's scented like, you know, you could just don't use it in your bird's water. All right. Another reason, maybe the second or third most common reason that birds are relinquished to us is because people develop respiratory issues. And um, having been one of those naughty smokers for many years, I am very protective of my lungs now. So I always mist the paper before I roll it up. And in this case, I fold it so that I'm not spewing dander everywhere and then roll it up. It's very important that your bird also live in a clean environment. So both of you need to make sure that you know, you're protecting your lungs. Your bird's lungs are far more, um, have more efficacy than your lungs do. They are, you know, canary in the coal mine. They're very sensitive to something. And I think, I think it leads to potential issues with some birds who live in disgusting cages where the seed is piled up on the bottom and nobody's ever cleaned it. And you know, when you're, it just takes a few seconds to rub it down. If you have a stainless cage, you can use stainless steel scrubbers for those hard parts. Just make sure it doesn't leave little metal pieces behind. And you know, if your bird doesn't rip up the paper, you can put paper on top of the grate. That way you don't have to clean the grate as much. It's so simple. If your bird does tear up the paper and you want to not put it on top of the grate, one of the tricks I recommend is that every now and then you turn your grate over. So when you're cleaning your grate, you're cleaning the underside. A lot of times people are just cleaning straight across the top, right? I always clean, I kind of do top and bottom at the same time. If you ever turn your cages over, you'll look underneath the bars. It's disgusting. So, you know, turning your grate over is a way to just make sure you're keeping that clean as well. And please, 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 please do not fall prey to all that stuff they sell in some pet stores like bedding and corn cob and walnut and other stuff like that. Do we have any questions? All right. I have a question for you. What's wrong with these, these cages? Someone says, everything. <laughs> everything, round, too small, circular, um, too small, too tall, not horizontal, bad bowl placement. Excellent. No place space prison like. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Nobody wants to live in a space like that, right? Everything is, I should just put everything. I love that answer. Everything is wrong with this. No places to go and nothing to do. So this is a question we get a lot and there's no straightforward answer. It's, you know, it's, it depends on your family, your household, your species of bird, but whether you get a dome top or a play top, I think a dome top is helpful if your, your bird is in the cage for longer hours because you're working, et cetera, or they have really long tails, as long as of course you're still providing out of cage time. But if your bird is uh, out of the cage a lot and able to come to the top and play, and not get into trouble, then that's great too. So you have to decide what's best for you, but those are kind of the pros and cons, in my opinion, of what you should invest in. And of course, if you can't afford, sta afford stainless, it's the way to go. It's the lifetime investment. If you're hoping to live with your long-lived bird for many years, then making that investment will pay off uh, because the powder-coated cages, at some point, they just, they just don't hold up well, and that's not safe for your bird, or easy to clean, or um, it's just not good. All right, in summary, places to go, things to do. Places to go, things to do, right? 
So wide, big highway, at least two things of action, a swing, a boing, a this, a that, things that move, things that cause your bird to have to move, and a place to hide, and a need to go around the cage to get to different um, places to play and eat. So I think we went faster than I expected to go here today, Michelle. So we have time for anybody's questions. 